Hey, a real quick pet paw PSA. Check out this video. Mm -hmm. This person is using one of those guns that reads the temperature from the surface that it's pointed at. Right, yeah. Looks like she's pointing it at asphalt. It comes up to 159 degrees. Youch. That's hot. See, that's why you got to teach your dogs how to walk in those little socks. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. Now, or my dog won't do that, but he's also a chihuahua, so I can just pick him up. Yeah, keep him <laughs> on the grass. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this sign that talks about how when the air temp outside is 77, the asphalt can be 125 degrees. Wow. When it's 87, feels like 143, de or it can be actually mm -hmm. 143 degrees. At 125 Wild. degrees, skin destruction can occur in just 60 seconds. Yes. Wow. I remember one time um, I had a cat, a curious cat, walk mm -hmm. across the stove. Mm. And, and this was like an hour after dinner. Mm -hmm. But uh, poor guy burned his paws. No, poor little baby. Because the stove had been on. And so mm -hmm. for like a month afterwards, we're still rubbing like... Oh. It's, it's tough because, you know, you want to ease its pain... Mm -hmm. And put like Vaseline or melted chapstick from your glove box on there. Okay, weird. But then enough. you've got weird paw prints all over your house. <laughs> right, right. Just watch your pets on that asphalt. See, at that point, you got to do the granny method where you put the lotion on and then you also put on socks. There you go. Yeah. Uh, here's a weird one. If you do end up with a burn, Vagisil is actually really good for alleviating the burning sensation. Vagia what? Vagisil. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, like I remember as a kid, I burnt myself on a hot glue gun as I was like crafting with my aunt or something. Uh -huh. And my mom's friend was like, yeah, put some Vagisil on it. So we went out, we bought some, put it on, and I applied that for like two days straight, and it was the best. Just, it was the only thing that helped. I just watched a South Park episode <laughs> where, was it Cartman who yes, took a bunch of Cartman Vagisil? Yes, it was Cartman who wanted to, he ate Vagisil so he could be stupid and poor enough to drive a NASCAR. <laughs> Obviously, none of our views are shared there. I'm just saying what happened in the episode. Yeah. It is kind of cool to watch a show that's been on since, what, 97? Yeah, it's been on for a long time. And it's 26th season, but it's kind of cool to go, oh, that's when, uh, that was the Kanye Fish Sticks episode. Mm -hmm. That was the... That was when that thing happened. That right. was, you know, it, it's just, it's sort of a trip through history. And I got to tell you, no matter your feelings on South Park, it is brilliant. <laughs> Not just kind of funny, brilliant satire. Yeah. Cutting to the core. I think sometimes they could tighten up the jokes a little and make them less fart-based. Sure, but, sure. But overall, you know, when I was younger and I didn't really understand the nuance as much, I thought it was really stupid. As I'm a little older and I understand where they're coming from and what they're actually saying, I actually do think it's it's pretty funny. Now, I've got a PSA. All right. Have you heard of the Pure Hope Hygiene Pantry? I have not. So, yeah, basically it's a pantry that anyone can go to and, you know, take the hygiene products that they need, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, we've got food pantries and stuff like that, but a lot of programs don't account for hygiene products. And it's nuts how expensive some of those can be. Sure. There's that pink tax, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Where feminine products especially are sold at a premium. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I know a lot of schools have been doing that for what? Five, ten years now? Doing what exactly? Like, like giving oh, away yeah, giving hygiene away, mm -hmm. products if they're needed. Oh, I, I feel like that's been since schools were a thing. Oh, okay. You know, like teachers spend so much time with their students. They understand their home life, I think, better than a lot of other adults, you know, and frankly, there are kids who aren't getting what they need because either their parents can't afford it or they don't realize their kid needs it and don't do anything about it. Um, but, you know, you walk into one middle school classroom and you know exactly who needs what. <laughs> right. Yeah. Middle <laughs> they schools. They get stinky. <laughs> they're interesting because <laughs> kids are becoming adults. They're mm -hmm. sort of in the in, in between land there. Right. And yeah, they elementary schools smell like pencil shavings and tater tots mm -hmm. and orange peels, mm -hmm. whereas middle schools smell like kid bo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I imagine the teachers have some olfactory fatigue, <laughs> like probably. farmers and ranchers get. Yeah, from right. the scent. <laughs> right, but yeah, my mom's a, a school counselor, so I know that she gives away a ton of like hygiene products just to the kids that need it. Okay. Um, so this is kind of a nice option because it's going to help alleviate some of that in the school system. And it's it's also going to be more widely available to people who are 
not in school anymore or who just needed this one month to get by and stuff like that. Right. Do you have to be on any sort of special state assistance? Do they check IDs or whatever? Or? It doesn't. Well, you know what? I'm not super sure. It doesn't look like they do. Okay. So that might be a better question posed for them. Okay. Um, but it seems like it's a pretty, you know, no questions asked, asked, go in, get what you need facility. Probably can't do like a shopping spree type. <laughs> right. Swipe things into your basket, but no, there's I probably, wonder if there's like a limit per person limit per, per person. week or something. Yeah. yeah. And but, where is it? Uh, it's on Ammon Road, uh, just before Highway 26, south of Beaches Corner. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And there, again, it's free. Yeah. Like you don't pay them money. Yeah. You just go and pick up what you need to pick up. Mm-hmm. What a cool concept. I know. Yeah, it's nice. Well, you know, you've got food banks. It's nice to have a hygiene bank. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, and as someone who's had to get hygiene products for people before, like, it can be really hard to find that stuff. It shouldn't be, you'd think. But, like, you know, you, uh, I know that the men's shelter, um, what's that called again? Yeah, the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission, Thank you. I believe. Yeah, I know that the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission will do... Todd Wood, <laughs> what's up? I know that they'll do hygiene uh, packs, but you can only get one a month per person. Okay. Um, which, realistically, the stuff that they have in there is full size, and it should last more than a month unless you're being, you know, really reckless with it, which usually people aren't. So it's not too bad, but, you know, stuff like that can be a little harder to get your hands on. So knowing that there are two locations now that you can get stuff like that here in town is really useful. And I wonder if they accept like donations. I'm sure they do, right? Of cash or goods. I'd have to imagine. Yeah. yeah. And did you say they only let in one person at a time? That's what I saw on their website. So okay. I don't know if that's entirely true. I would assume if you're like part of a couple, they'll probably let you both in. Sure. But you know, just so that you have a little privacy while you're grabbing what you need, which I think is really nice. I mean, personal hygiene is kind of private. Yeah. Right? One could even say it's personal. So, Pure Hope Hygiene Pantry, that's why you're IFAF this week. Mm -hmm. Chris Pie 5, 21 Finger Gun Salute, and Chef's Kiss. To you. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Hit them up if you want to contribute. Perfect for the next time your mother-in-law gives you a scent of something that you're allergic to. Oh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm.